This thing is a little loud. So in today's project, I'm gonna look on how I can quiet the beast and still get the cooling performance or at least something similar to the cooling performance that I get out of it now. Because as you can tell, it's loud as hell. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. As you saw in the intro, that is my server as it stands. It is still super loud. So I'll tell you what I've been doing and what I've done to it in order to try to uh, lower the, the sound overall, but it's still not good enough. So I went into my old boxes that I had for the uh, Noctua fans that I put into this server, right? And some of those boxes that had PWM resistors uh, inside the box that I didn't use for this server because the server runs just as quiet as I need it to be. And I used those resistors in on two of those fans, uh, which did help a little bit, but just one of those fans is loud enough to drive me absolutely insane. So what you heard is actually a reduced noise version of my server. Now I did this hopefully to get like a, a cheap easy fix, but it didn't really work out especially because I don't have all the resistors I need for one and two. Even with those resistors, those fans are still loud. So what I've been doing actually is I've been playing around with Unraid. Now my previous video I was bouncing back and forth between Free NAS and Unraid, still leaning in the direction of Unraid. Unraid. However, I actually hadn't run Unraid at that point. So now I'm officially running Unraid. I've got a trial key going. I did mess around with Free NAS for a little bit. I was, I've, it's not really a new world to me. I've messed with FreeNAS before. I've actually had a FreeNAS server on a, my old Q6600 CPU. Uh, that was originally my Plex server. So I've been there and I've done that, but I was just kind of re-messing around with it, kind of exploring some uh, some of the newer features and options and changes that has been uh, implemented into FreeNAS since the last time I've used it. And I can say that back with FreeNAS, and I'm no genius here, and you guys all know this, I'm learning as I go along, but getting back into FreeNAS, I found myself, again, Googling a lot of things just to kind of get through the system and get certain things set up. And it's not just like Plex related. This is, I was exploring other things, you know, VMs and plugins and all kinds of stuff that I could, uh, just seeing what else I could do with my server after I get it built. The FreeNAS is actually installed on a 60 gigabyte SSD that came with the server when I ordered it. And what I did is I just unplugged that, threw in my Lexar USB drive that I ordered specifically for this server to run Unraid, and I installed the Unraid trial onto that. And since then I've been playing with Unraid, and it's been very interesting. I've had to Google a few things, but for the most part it's all just, you know, simple. And I really like it actually. It's actually kind of winning over my heart right now, and I think I'm, I think I'm pretty much sold on Unraid, I mean, to, to be honest. So that might answer the question number one that I had in the previous video as far as what operating system. And then. I got these. Now, these are basically small form factor RJ45, or I'm sorry, SF, SFP to RJ45. Uh, thank you to those in the comments who recommended these. This is awesome. I had some people that recommended an HP branded cable. I also ordered that. It's thrown in the closet right now because it didn't work. It did not work with my HP Pro Curve, even though the cable that I bought was an HP Pro, Pro Curve certified cable. So I don't know what I did wrong there. I don't know if maybe these ports just don't work or. I don't know, but I decided to stop messing with it and uh, I just went down this route. So I did throw like 30 or 40 bucks down the drain getting the SF or getting the uh, HP branded SFP cable. But in the end, this is a lifesaver. So I think I'm gonna have to get another one of these because these are, these are nice. Actually, I'm gonna have to look into something else aside from this, maybe not even have to get another one of these because after I installed Unraid, I went into the device list for my server. And this is awesome. And I found out that the two F or SFP ports that I have on the server board built in are both 10 gigabits. So what that means is that most likely once I get everything set up, running, good to go, right? I got that one SFP port going from the SFP to RJ45, running to one of these plugins right now. That's up and running at full one gigabit. And that second port, I think I'm gonna be able to plug that in directly with the current SFP cable that I have running from my server to my main computer and link them both together with 10 gigabits. So, hallo freaking luya, praise to the noodle lord, everything's gonna work out, hopefully. It's all really, at this point, about configuration and compatibility with the cables and the servers and that sort of thing, but I think I might be able to get it to work. I really, I really think that that problem's solved. It's just a matter of doing it at this point, not necessarily having the right stuff. I think. But on to today's project and the entire reason for this video, sorry for the long intro, if it's still classified as an intro, noise reduction. 
All right, so these are just a few fans that I have that are PWM fans. This is a 120, I think. This is a one, these are uh, 140s. Now these actually, these are the NZXT fans that came with my Kraken. Now, if you guys remember, if you guys saw my other video, uh, this was originally with the Kraken, the all-in-one water cooler, and they were loud as hell. I mean, they, they were pretty bad, right? Not as bad as the, the new server, but they were pretty bad. So I replaced these things as quick as I could. Uh, and this is, this is a Cooler Master. I think this came with my case or something. I don't know. But it's a 120 millimeter PWM controlled fan. These are basically what I have that are PWM at this point. So I wanted to make sure that whatever I plug in with my with my up and coming test will plug directly into the motherboard, be PWM controlled by the motherboard, by the operating system, or by the everything, uh, and built into the computer, so I don't have to mess with anything on my end. Now, in my server, there is kind of like a, a firewall looking thing, or just like a mounting bracket that has all of my fans hooked up to it, the little 80 millimeter fans. From what I can tell, and I haven't actually done this yet, but from what I can tell, these have screws on the inside and the outside, primarily on the outside, that I can take apart and remove this entire thing. So now this is good for one primary reason, that means I can take it out and I can modify it however I please in order to get the fans that I want to run in the system. However, if I go in there and I start chopping shit up, right, to try to get this sound down just a little bit, and it doesn't work cooling wise for my processing unit, then I'm gonna be in deep shit. I mean, I'm gonna just ruin this thing and I'm not gonna have a way to mount the, the built in cooler that came with the server, and I'm gonna be up shit's creek without a paddle type of thing, right? So here's my idea, and here's my, my, my testing for today, is I am going to use cardboard. Yes, that's right, cardboard. I'm gonna take this little firewall thing that mounts to my fans right now, I'm gonna take this out, I'm gonna use it as kind of like a template, and then I'm gonna cut some, up some cardboard, and I'm gonna mount cardboard in there after I mount some fans in there. Now you might be asking yourself, why am I using two 140s and then one 120? That's actually a good question, and it's all because of the wires. See, here on the side, I have, uh, on one side I have SAS connectors, and on the other side I have power connectors uh, for the hard drives and the fans. So with all of those connectors and, and wires going through the server, I do need some room on both sides. Uh, so when I was kind of measuring things out, I was putting three 140s all together. I just didn't have any room to put any cables. So I do have to make a sacrifice and figure out you know, where I want two 140s and one 120 and still have room to put wires and run them you know, from the front to the back. So that's kind of what I'm going with. I'm hoping that I can do two 140s and one 120. Uh, I might end up only being able to do you know, one 140 and then two 120s, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm gonna roll with the idea of two 140s and one 120, mostly because I only have those for PWM fan controls right now. So I could probably dig, I might have some more 120s, but for right now, this is what I'm rolling with. Okay, now that I got this out, I can use this for a template to build my little cardboard ghetto fix thing. It's not really a fix, just testing. I don't actually anticipate using it permanently, but this will allow me to test it out once I get a piece of cardboard that's this size, cut out some holes for the fans, put those fans into the computer, hook up everything like normal, and see how things run. So that's the idea here. That's the reason why I'm doing this. So. Um, <clears throat> As you can see, I really don't want to cut this up unless I know for sure it's going to work. Now, I've been running my server and I've been running some tests. I have some hard drives in there. I have about four or five hard drives in there right now. Uh, some of them, most of them are lower gigabyte, uh, like 500 gigabyte drives. Um, but I've been testing it out. I also installed VMware, or I'm sorry, I also installed a VM. It's a Windows 7 and I've been running Prime 95 with all the processing units uh, being used. So or all the cores being used. So with that running, and I'm talking maybe 10 to 15 minutes of Prime 95 running, I peak right around 62 degrees, give or take. I mean, it's usually a little bit lower, but um, 62 degrees is about the highest that I've been seeing. Now, when it was running more or less idle with not much going on on the server, I was hovering between 38 to 42 degrees Celsius. So those are the numbers that I have to start with and I'm gonna use those numbers to see if this is successful when I add and replace, uh, or when I replace these 80 millimeter fans with 140 and 120. So that's my goal, and hopefully this works.
Okay, so took a little bit of creativity and some cardboard, but I did finally get everything put back together. So it's not perfect. Uh, it's not attached in any way. I'm not trying to make this a permanent solution. This is more, ex again, just a test just to see if these three fans can keep this server cool under a heavy load. Now, I, I do realize there are some flaws with this test. Uh, for example, I only have four hard drives in it and they're not all going to be working right now. So the airflow is going to be a little bit more than what it would be if I do start to get this thing filled up all the way. Um, but if I do go with Unraid, most likely as far as the, the heat produced from the hard drives, I'm not going to have a large amount of heat production in any one point from all of my hard drives. That is because I am going with Unraid and Unraid really stores files to single drives uh, at a time. So like if I have a movie file that I'm copying to the, the server and Plex is going to be using that movie file, it's only going to spin up that one drive in order to read off of it. So that's going to be a bonus for me because it's going to cut down overall in the heat and I think that's going to be a reason why I'm going to move towards Unraid versus FreeNAS um, just to try to save myself on some heat because I am taking this kind of ass backwards way of cooling my system. This of course versus FreeNAS where if you're building a, a pool like I was I, was, I pretty much landed on six drives in a pool. I know somebody asked me, you know, why are you married to the whole six pool idea or the six drive in a pool idea? Well, for me, it's just like, well, if you have two drives, you know, for parity and then you have four more drives, I can, you know, that was the most rational uh, amount of drives that I could, I could think of to start with, build that pool, copy my stuff over to it, and then start with another set of six drives. So that's just what made sense to me. Um, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to end up going with Unraid, I think, at this point. So, yeah. And, and FreeNAS is going to spin up everything, uh, all six of those drives, all at once. And for whatever reason, if I'm reading from two different things, like let's say there's two movies being watched or a movie and a TV show being watched, that's 12 drives that are going to be spun up all at the same time. So that would produce a lot more heat than it would if, let's say, I only had two or four drives spun up at the same time. As far as the airflow goes, I don't know how much that's going to change. I definitely am going to keep an eye on my server. I'm going to see if this, I haven't even tried to boot it up yet. So this is going to be interesting to see if this thing boots up, make sure that, you know, the fans don't conflict with the motherboard and give me any kind of air. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to boot this up. And then if it does boot up, I'm going to keep a close eye on the temperature at idle, you know, just as it boots up, see if there's any issues right off the bat. And then I'm going to start my virtual machine and I'm going to start uh, prime 95, which does stress all of the CPU cores. And then I'm going to see if basically it stays the same or maybe a little bit higher. I don't know. I think I can get up to about 80 degrees Celsius if I really wanted to. I don't want to, but I think with anything underneath 80 degrees is going to be doable. Uh, I would still like to keep it hopefully below 70, maybe 65. That's my goal. Uh, if this doesn't work, then I really need to look into, you know, water cooling or some other kind of uh, uh, solution for it. So let's go ahead and try to see if this thing boots up. Do one quick little run through, make sure everything is not touching the fans, everything's plugged in. I got all these fans hooked up to the motherboard, everything's connected. So, assuming I hooked everything up correctly, this should work. Should. Okay, for some reason that kicked on my backup power supply. I'm not sure why. All right, it's not working. Fuck. Okay, try number two. I rearranged some stuff. Fuck. Okay, so I got it to boot up. Uh, turns out for some reason, one of the Rams came out of the slot just a little bit no idea why I didn't touch the RAM so yeah anyways I just noticed it when I was putting it back together like wait a minute this should be all the way in so uh, I got everything plugged in now got it turned on for some reason when I plugged in my server it turned on the fan to my power supply question mark I don't know that's kind of weird um, but this this was doing something I don't know what happened it was working. I don't know. Ah, there it is. So 
see if I can get it to... Okay, with three of those raid cards, it does take a little bit for it to go through the boot up process. So I'm gonna let it boot up, then I'm gonna get into the unraid uh, graphic user interface. And then probably Telnet in just to see what the uh, the temps are running at. And then if that's good, I'm gonna move on with my test. Okay, so I got everything powered on, got the VMs running and the stress test going. I've been running it for about 10 minutes now. And I have to say, I'm impressed with the results. I'm happy-ish with the results, but take a listen. Okay, so what you just heard is the stress test running the CPUs at 100%. Um, so the fans should be full blown, I would imagine. Uh, they're, they're at full rotation right now. So that's as loud as it should get, I think. And that's, that is worlds away from what it was before. So that's pretty cool, honestly. Uh, I've been checking out some of the temperatures, keeping an eye on it through uh, Telnet or through Putty, I'm sorry. Um, and it looks like the peak that I've seen is about 76 to 77, um, but it does stay around 75 after, again, you know, 10, 15 minutes worth of stress test at 100%. So it's a little high, right? Just a little bit high, but it is still manageable, I think. And I think it actually says a lot for uh, what I could do with this, you know, maybe with some better fans and obviously a more professional setup. Uh, maybe it is time to go through and, and, and modify that plate that came with it that I took out. Uh, now that I know that this works, now I could probably, you know, cut that up and actually add good fans to it. Maybe I'll look at some Noctua fans. Maybe I'll look at some other ones. I'm not really sure right now. Uh, this was just kind of step one. So it's looking pretty good. Um, I think step two for me, honestly, is going to be figuring out a way to monitor the temperatures of my raid cards, even though they're not going to be full blown balls to the wall for the most part, just because uh, most of the time, most of the discs are not be spinning up. There is going to be some parity rebuilds. Um, if I ever have to change, add or remove or whatever, some drives. So that could cause more drives to be active at the same time. So that could start to, uh, to get some heat built up in those. So um, I got to find a way to try to monitor those temperatures um, just to make sure that those aren't going to overheat because I know that could be an issue. So, uh, and if that is an issue, then I have to look at something else. I don't know. I got I to approach that whenever it comes up. So, but for now, everything, lo everything is looking good. I'm gonna run some more tests, continue to run some tests and kind of mess with it. Probably gonna go ahead and get this video edited because uh, I think I've pretty much done what I can do. Um, but while I was going through this, I was posting a picture to Twitter and I was thinking, you know what? Something like this probably des uh, deserves some sort of a name. You know, I've never named a computer or a server before. Um, so yeah, yeah, what should I name this thing? I don't know. I haven't really named one and, and uh, I'll be looking for some ideas. So give me some ideas down in the comments below so that's it for today thank you for watching and following my little you know idiot's guide to a server thing that i'm doing for this so this is part two i'm not exactly sure what part three is going to be but it's probably going to be revolving around networking um, and maybe solidifying this whole fan solution that i've, I've created today um, but like and subscribe below and have a good day